tampons and pads, you know, sanitary products that women use when women have periods. But don't you know, some men have periods too. At least that's what the brand always thinks. Also, we get an LGBTQ cereal because of course that's been in high demand. And more seriously, we are going to talk about the child abuse case concerning James. If you've seen it, it's trending Save James. And I believe that this case, while it's making history, matters more to us on a personal level than we may be seeing on a surface level. All that and more on this episode of Deconstructing the Culture. I am your host, Elisa Steele. Just when you thought our world couldn't get any crazier, it gets crazier. I really shouldn't be surprised at this point. I'm pretty sure that next what's coming is we're going to have pregnancy tests for men because, you know, they're going to, the left is going to tell us that men can get pregnant too, because of course, if men can have periods, they can get pregnant according to the left. Here's the thing. So always, um, it's owned by Procter and Gamble. They caved to a boycott campaign that began when a transgender activist noticed that always placed the Venus symbol, a circle with a plus sign or a cross beneath it. And it's universally recognized as the sign for female gender. And they put it on the wrappers of some of their sanitary products, which shouldn't be that big of a deal. In fact, I probably never noticed it until this story came up. Um, a quote from the Daily Mail, a trans activist using the pseudonym Melly Boom had tweeted in July asking always why it had to have the sign on the sanitary products. According to the Daily Mail, the tweet said, there are non-binary and trans folk who still need to use your products too, you know, um, unquote. So really quickly, what I think is funny is why the heck would this brand cave? Do they honestly think the trans people who are confused about their gender are going to stop using their products? And let's just say that they did. They stopped using their products and those trans people boycotted. They're such a tiny fraction of our culture that who cares? Most of the people using Always Brands products are going to be females who identify as female. Anyways, uh, Melly Boom is referred to is referring to a female to male transgender individuals who may identify as a different gender but who do not undergo surgical or medical transition. So let me explain. Basically, it's trans person who decided not to castrate themselves. Um, well, I guess that doesn't apply to women, but it's a trans person who decides not to get a, a created penis attached to them. And so they still have a period because, you know, if you're biologically female, it's pretty likely to happen. So some social media users claim that the transgender females can have period like symptoms once a month. So essentially, some social activists, social justice warriors are saying that men, biological men who identify as women can sometimes have a feeling of a once a month symptoms like PMS. So essentially, they're so con- some men, biological men are so confused about their gender that while they I, that when they start identifying as female, they somehow start having once a month symptoms, PMS symptoms. We don't want to exclude those confused men and the symptoms that they think that they're feeling once a month because they think that they're women. Confusing. I know, but that's the world we live in. So there was a whole boycott and I don't even understand why some companies care about this stuff, but apparently always, and Procter, Procter & Gamble does because they replied to a, a, a transgender activist named Ben Sanders, who was also pestering them. Um, they, they, they replied, we are glad to inform you that as of December, we will use a wrapper design without the feminine symbol. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. So here's the thing. You're asking yourself, should I care? And my answer, to make it simple, is yes. And I'm coming to why. But essentially, I believe that the goal, it's not even just I believe, it's, it's clearly the stated goal of these activists to break down the meaning of female, the meaning of family, the meaning of 
anything that makes sense, science, religion, anything we hold on to, they want to break it down until it's all confusing and it all is all subject to feelings and whatever they demand in the moment is the truth. And I believe that if we start caving on the things that seem like they don't really matter, like whether or not our feminine products have female symbols, which quite frankly, I don't really care, but it's the principle of caving to it, it does matter. We also have brands like Kellogg's. Kellogg just launched a LGBTQ themed breakfast cereal titled All Together to promote acceptance, no matter who you love, no matter who you love. Now, of course, you could take that the benign way of like, oh, you can love your neighbor and you can love your cat. No, they've obviously got it in rainbow letters. And it's about introducing children to the concept that sometimes people are confused about their gender and sometimes men want to step other men and women want to sleep with other women. Why? Why do we need to introduce our children to this? The answer is, if you're from, coming from me, we don't. We need to protect them from this. But if you're coming from the left, it's yes, we need to push sexuality on them as young and as fiercely as possible. And if that means going through their cereal or through their mother's feminine products or through their school, then hey, that's what they're going to do. And it is very, very disturbing. Now, something that I think is really interesting, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because I want to actually talk about James, but something that I found interesting is this just happened. There was this huge backlash in um, the UK in a primary school in Birmingham, England. It halt, this school has halted LGBT lessons after 600 pupils were reportedly taken out of classes. Um, so something that, <laughs> oh, I don't know what this means. Something that kind of makes me shake my head is it was because it was this community that was going to the school. Cause at first you're like, wow, that's amazing. We should be doing this everywhere. You look at it and it's by furious Muslim parents. And they were upset at the homosexuality being quote aggressively unquote taught to their children. Pause right there. Why isn't this happening everywhere? Why does this have to be something that our Muslim brothers and sisters are exclusively standing up for it, that they would pull 600 children from a school teaching this nastiness and sexual impurity and sexual confusion to children. Why isn't this happening everywhere? We have a lot of Christians here in the Western world, but specifically the United States. Why are we not having an, a mass exodus of parents taking their children out of schools or at least out of classes that are being taught in our country? It, it just... I have a little bit of frustration at the lukewarm Christian culture we had that doesn't really stand up for what the Bible says, but that's another topic for another day. But um, essentially, the school was forced to suspend its, quote, no outsiders, that's the name of the class, um, until after Easter, while a consultation takes place with parents. Well, we can imagine how that's going to go. If they pulled their kids, there's no way that they're going to reinstate it. Tension between the school and parents escalated due to a row surrounding LGBT lifestyle being taught in classrooms. The ill feeling from angry parents has even boiled over into threats against the assistant head teacher, Andrew um, Moffat, who is gay. He claims he has received nasty emails, including one which warned he wouldn't last long. Now, I am not ever, 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 ever going to condone violence. I think it is wrong. It, it doesn't matter how disturbed parents were by this class. It does not ever matter, you know, what this guy wants to teach. I think it's wrong to threaten someone with their life. So I'm not condoning that. That is, that is vile and should be condemned. Um, but the primary school, which has around 740 pupils. So if 740, you take out 600, you're talking about most of the school. Um, it's located in a predominantly Muslim area and it's come under fire from Muslim parents um, for this propaganda that's being taught. And basically, you know, they're, they're, re they're responding negatively to it because it is strictly forbidden in Islam, but homosexuality is also forbidden and not condoned in the least and is called a sin by our Christian religion. So why are we as Christians not standing up in numbers like this? And in fierceness like this, not the threats part, but pulling our children out. Why aren't we taking action like that? Why are we not coming on and, and putting our, our schools under huge pressure and our libraries under huge pressure because we're having drag queen story time and drag queen stripping time at libraries? Why are we not having complete outrage 
over this and stopping funding for schools and libraries that promote this. I want to see more of this, not the, not, I just want to be perfectly clear to anyone who wants to misconstrue this. I'm not condoning the violent part. I'm talking about pulling students out of programs we disagree with. Anyways, books, um, some of the books that they were trying to teach were uh, books such as King and King or Mommy, Mama, and Me. And um, it's disturbing because I've actually checked out the latter one of those two books, and it is definitely not something that children need to be introduced to. Now, before I continue on and we talk about this James situation, the seven-year-old boy who is, there's a fierce battle between mother and father for his sanity both of them are claiming abuse mother is saying that father is abusing him by not allowing their son to live out as a girl named luna and father is calling the mother abusive by encouraging and promoting and i would say forcing and i think the father would agree forcing their son to identify and act go forward in life as a female named Luna. So both of them are claiming abuse. Let's talk about that case. Let's talk about what that means for our country and for our future families or our current families. But before I continue on, if you'll please take a moment to like this video on YouTube or like it on uh, SoundCloud, wherever you're listening, Google Play Music, Stitcher, wherever it is, please like and subscribe and please share this. Share this on your social media, share this in your stories, whatever it is, send a, you know, if you want to do old school, send a text message um, and share it with a friend or family member. But honestly, it really does mean a lot. If you would consider leaving a five-star review, especially on iTunes, that is a really big deal. I would even go so far as to say, if you don't listen on iTunes, but you want to jot over to your iTunes and leave a five-star review and maybe even a written review, I always read them and I love to share them on Instagram, really would mean a lot to me. It helps so much with the ranking. So please, if you're feeling inspired, go ahead and do that. All right, so let's continue on. So in a, according to an article from the Daily Wire, there is a four-year-old boy, in case you're not familiar with the story, I'm just going to go over some of those, those details, um, or if you want to know more. There is a, a video, excuse me, there was a video taken four years ago by a Texas father, Jeff Younger, and he shows his son, James Younger, saying, mommy tells him he's a girl, and he paints his fingernails and nails and puts him in dresses. That's concerning enough as it is, but it continues because Younger is currently fighting for soul. Well, currently as in this month, um, I'll talk more about what happened in this case, but um, currently, you know, this last month and in, in the past, the father has been fighting fiercely for soul, you know, uh, basically soul custody of both of his boys, their twin boys. Um, and James is the one that they're specifically having issues with, but he's, he's wants custody of both boys, understandably so. Um, against his ex-wife, Anna Gorgalis, said during a podcast last year that he took a video of James, who was three years old at the time, when he noticed changes in his son's behavior. So thank goodness he caught this on video. But he, and uh, if you watch the video, it is just heartbreaking, but um, the father asked, you're a boy, right? Mr. Younger asked his son in the video. No, James responds, I'm a girl. Who told you you're a girl? The father asks. Mommy, the child answers. Mr. Younger asks, when did she tell you that you were a girl? Because I love girls, the three-year-old says. Oh, I see. So mommy told you you're a girl? Mm-hmm, James answers in the affirmative. The child tells Mr. Younger his mother puts him in dresses, buys him headbands and hair clips, and paints his nails because he likes nail polish. So mommy puts you in a dress and puts nail polish in you, Mr. Younger says. Mm-hmm, James replies. And what does mommy tell you? She tells me I'm a girl, the child responds. Okay, just pausing right here. This is, I mean, no wonder why this guy is freaked out. I, this, is, this is child abuse. To convince your child he is a gender that he is not is child abuse. Let's continue. In January, Mr. Younger appeared on an episode of Like Mucus, Like Macus, or excuse me, Luke Macus Show podcast and recalled his talk, taking of the video. My three-year-old son tells me he's at my home and he tells me that he's a girl and I had the presence of mind, thank goodness, to pull up my iPhone and videotape me asking him about it. And that was literally the first time I really understood what was happening to my son, Younger said, and this was the first time I noticed and it was just past his third birthday. Younger noted in his personal assessment that Mrs. Gorgalis was only giving James love and affection if he acted like a girl. 
to really alarming, manipulative stuff right there, just saying. The Texas father also claimed that his ex-wife was putting my son into timeouts and she would lock him in his room and say that monsters only eat boys. What the heck? On Monday, a consensus of 11 to 12, Monday is um, last Monday, so you're listening to this, this would have been a week ago. Um, 11 to 12 jurors in Dallas court ruled against granting younger soul managing conservative over James and his twin brother, Jude. Um, this is devastating news. This is um, from LifeSite News. And I think it was at this point that really the world started to take notice and like really questioning, wait, this is happening in our own court? Not only did we think the story was ludicrous, but now we have jurors 11 to 12, or excuse me, yeah, 11 out of the 12 jurors. So it's, it's 11 to 1 voting to give a mother custody of her son whom she's clearly sexually abusing this is it 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 went crazy it the hashtag save james trended on twitter then the governor decided to get involved and he said um he he said later um that the attorney general's office and texas department of family protective services will be taking up the matter and it's being looked into which was which is good and then just a few days ago, they, the judge made a final ruling after kicking all fam, family and friends and most of the media out of the courtroom. The, court, the judge did make a final ruling giving joint custody to mother and father. But I don't think that's enough. And I would agree that you don't either. Now, before I could talk about why this matters to us, and I think we can kind of see where this is going, I want to talk a little bit, I just, this just hurts my heart, honestly, but let's talk about why this doesn't make sense. I know it doesn't make sense, but let's just verbalize that. So, um, and, and also one clarifying point, there has been some confusion I've been seeing on social media, people saying like, oh, the mother's going to start giving them hormone blockers. That is not the case. They have not said that they're, the mother has not said that she's going to give them hormone blockers, although she has not ruled out that possibility either. So, um, you know, if, if, if she had been given full custody, there would have been no hope left for this boy. Now, as it is, he still has a, he still has a fighting father trying to stand up for him, but He's being sexually abused half of his time, half of his time with a parent and being confused. And not only that, but it's not just the mother. The mother has all of the teachers, uh, the school police officer, officer, everyone who works at the school, everyone who interacts with him except his dad, calling him Luna, calling him female pronouns, treating him like a girl, and he only has one sane person in his life, and that's his father. I don't know. I don't want to say the story's over, but that is just sickening. Truly, truly sickening. Um, Anyways, so let's talk a little bit. um, I want to share with you a little bit of what Matt Walsh has shared, which I think he made a really critical point that no one else was pointing out. And it, it just is amazing. And I love that he was willing to speak up about this because he makes some really, really, really great points. So a point that was brought up by the, I think it was like the Texas, oh gosh, I'm trying to find the paper name, but interestingly, amicus attorney Dollop, or Dunlop, reply, or revealed that Gorgalis, that's the mother, told him that Luna was not the first name that James picked out. The first was Starfire, a female character from the superhero cartoon Teen Titans Go. Gorgalis, however, encouraged him to pick a different name. And then Matt Walsh encourages us to look at two things about this. Gorgalis insists that her daughter's name is now Luna, but unsurprisingly, that's not the name James first chose. James wanted to be Starfire, like the cartoon he watches. Gorgalis steered him away from that, and somehow they, or rather she, settled on this current pseudonym. 
Why is this significant? Two reasons, and here are Walsh's two reasons. One, it shows the realm James was living in when he allegedly claimed he was a girl. He was in the same realm every normal child inhibits from infancy until adolescence, the realm of fantasy. He wasn't identifying as a girl, he was identifying as a cartoon girl. There's no substantive difference between self-identity and self-identity excuse me, between this self-identity and the self-identity of my own three-year-old boy who regularly claims to be a dinosaur, a bear, a bear hunter, a shark, or something, or sometimes all four, which gives me a great idea for a movie, incidentally. I think Walsh's humor is hilarious, but I'm going to pause right there before I give you Walsh's second reason, because I used to be a nanny. Like many young females and some males, I nannied for many years, and every single child I've nannied when they were young has all told me very, very strongly and convincingly that they are something that they are not. Two boys I used to nanny would regularly tell me whatever superhero was popular to them, that they were that person, that they were Spider-Man. And nothing I could say, not that I tried, but nothing I could say would really convince them that they weren't Spider-Man. In fact, that's why we can convince children that Santa Claus is real, which I'm going to do an episode on that because I think it's wrong to tell children that Santa Claus is real, but I'll tell, I'll share that around Christmas time. No, but there's a reason why children believe in Chippy the Elf watching them creepily around Christmas time and Santa Claus flying with reindeer and landing on roofs and going down chimneys. They believe that with all their hearts, they believe that it's true. So why should it be any different for a child to believe that they're a girl? In their mind, a girl is just another being, a fairy or a dragon. A girl has very little to no meaning, except it's something different. And they use their imaginations and they at some level believe that they are. So when these children sometimes tell their parents, that they are a girl when in, in fact they are a boy, in their mind that's no different than telling their, their parent that they're a dragon. The only difference is today when we have children telling their parents that they're a gender that they're not, now all of a sudden they take them seriously. If your son came to you and said, mommy, I'm a bear, you would be like, oh that's nice and send them on their way and you would know that it's not true and that they're just being funny and silly and children and with imaginations and you wouldn't take it seriously. But now we have delusional parents who take that child coming up, that boy coming up to them and saying, mommy, I'm a girl and saying, oh wow, this, this, is, this is real. I should take this seriously. I'm going to treat my boy now like a like a girl and mess him up for the rest of his life and sexually abuse him with hormone blockers and with surgeries and life altering damaging consequences come of parents believing the delusions of their children because children are children and they believe most of the stuff that they that they come up with until they're much older anyways so then Walsh, this is, I'm going to go back to what Walsh is talking about. His second observation is number two, quote, reflect on the fact that James's mom didn't let him go by Starfire. Indeed, it is striking that these painfully progressive parents who want their children to have the freedom to choose their own genders still won't let them choose their own names. There's a reason why trans kids always have names like Luna or Jazz or Sky or Parker, or something similarly ambiguous and trendy. Do we really think three and four-year-olds are hopping on Google to find out what the unisex monkeys are in fashion at the moment? No. If he left it up to a child to decide for himself, he'd probably and then inevitably gradu gravitate towards something like Starfire or Ninja or Pirate Poopy Butt. And all these options would be better than Luna, but they still wouldn't look great on a resume. Yet these parents never ended, oh, never ended up with a trans daughter named Pirate Poopy Butt or Starfire. That's because even Anna Gorgalis knows that her son is too young to be entrusted with choosing his own name. And eventually he will grow up and won't be as fond of that name that he liked when he was a child. What sort of idiot parent would allow her young son to make that kind of decision knowing how immature he is and how certain it is he will grow out of that phase? Now, no, we don't let our children choose their names for the same reason we don't let them get tattoos. Hopefully it's obvious where I'm going with this, that we don't let our children choose their names or get tattoos, even if the most progressive of parents would never allow these things, then why would we let them choose their genders? Walsh makes a really good point. Phenomenal point. Now, to the point that I want to come to and leave you with. We must care about this. We must act on this. We must fight against this because I'm telling you right now, 
this situation, if it continues to fester like this, we will find more cases like this in our country. There will be losses in this if we don't fight fiercely against this. And you know what? It will affect you someday personally, more than likely. Because here's the truth of the matter. We can pretend like politics don't affect us. In fact, one time when I was dating someone as a teenager, they told me, I don't like politics. And I was like, well, what do you mean? Well, it's just like everybody arguing and like, you know, whatever. And it's just like, it never really affects me. And I looked at them and I laughed. And at the time we were fighting homosexual marriage laws and transgender laws. And I'm just like, your parents have a business. Now, what's going to happen if your parents' business, one day someone walks in and says, I'm going to go use the ladies' bathroom, and that person's a man, and then your parents have to decide, do we protect our other female customers, or do we tell this man, yeah, you can go for it, and you are then faced, depending on which direction you go, with legal issues, because if you take a stand for your other female customers and say, no, you can't use the women's bathroom, you're a man, you have a penis, go into the men's bathroom, then they're faced potentially with a life-altering, business-destroying lawsuit. My point being, if we don't, the same way I told that person I was dating as a teenager that yes, politics matter, and yes, you should care, and yes, you should be involved, because it will affect your life, it's the same with this. This will affect your children's life, or your grandchildren, or your nieces and nephews. It will affect them. And it might not be, you might think, oh, well, no, where well, I'm going to teach my children about genders. Well, what happens if your child, like many teenagers do, your teenager decides he wants to be rebellious and go through a phase during middle school or high school and claim to be a gender that they are not because they're confused. Lots of, lots of teenagers are confused. And they're somehow influenced by our media and our world telling them this is okay, this is a natural, this is good. They pursue that and then they go to child services and say, my parents are abusing me. They won't let me take hormone blockers because I feel like my gender that I'm not. Then what? You have a life altering situation. I'm just telling you, this will affect you. If not today, then someday and it will affect your children and your grandchildren. So we must wake up. We must take a stand now. We need to do more, more involvement on every level from our libraries to our schools to our government i think we need to work on legislation drafting a bill at the highest level of government from the federal government banning and making it illegal to castrate to to uh, medically and hormonally castrate children it should be a hundred percent illegal to do any kind of gender therapy or encouragement of this on children. We need to fight this battle, and it is up to me and you to fight this battle. It is the left's goal to dismantle everything we hold dear to us, everything that is truth, and whether that's scientific or religious, in every way they want to dismantle truth, and it is up to you and I to stand for it and fight against that. All right, so we're about out of time, so I'm actually going to, I was going to talk about Kanye West music, so I'll have to save that for next week, and I have a great book I want to tell you about, but I'll save that for next week's episode. I'm going to end with Good in the World, and we'll wrap it up, call it a day. I love this story. This was actually a Facebook post that went minorly viral. Uh, it was posted by uh, Justin Tucker, and he posted, tonight was a night that I will never forget. This picture is a reminder of God's constant love and perfect timing pause right there. It's a picture of a police officer with a young teenage, it looks like teenage boy, teenage young man, placing his hand on the officer's shoulder. Both of them have their head bows, excuse me, their heads bowed and their eyes closed in prayer. Justin continues, tonight we had an amazing encounter with an incredible young man named Juan. He came up to Cameron, I believe that's the police officer in this photo, and asked if he could pray over him and his protection. After crying my eyes out, we got to have an amazing conversation with this gentleman. He was on fire for God, and you could feel his presence in the room. He said that he had felt compelled to talk to us and pray over Cameron. Wow, this is beautiful. We should all be praying for our men and women in uniform, both in the military and firefighters and police officers. And you know what? We should show support to them, and that's exactly what this young man did. And I'm so proud of a country where we still have our youth 
not only thanking our officers for their service to our country, but praying over them. Prayer is so powerful. And this is such a beautiful photo that I saw and I just had to share it with y'all because it made my day to look at that. And it inspired me to daily include our officers and and our military and even our president, whether I agree with him or not, I'd pray for President Obama if he was still president as well, because the leaders of the country are protectors of the country and of the law. They do need prayer. And you know what? We all need a lot more prayer. So God bless this young man, Juan. God bless our men and women in blue and protecting our country. And God bless America. Please subscribe and leave a five-star review. That is how this podcast makes it in the Apple rankings. That's how this podcast makes it in the YouTube world. It's because of your help and your support. And you know what? As much as I love putting these together, it is a lot of work. So it's a personal thank you to me. Let me be candid with you. I need you to go share this video, like, and subscribe. Thanks.